assisted insight activation. Doctors love medical jargon and patients get very intimidated. What does that word mean? And who needs it? And do I need it? And should I be doing it? Now, it's just a very fancy word for what is a treatment option for a very small proportion of infertile men. Let me explain some of this to you. Now, normally the sperm is designed in such a way that it will activate the oocyte. Oocyte is just a fancy word for egg. So obviously the sperm needs to wake up the egg. It needs to activate it so that it will continue fertilizing and will then divide, become a good quality embryo, which will then become a baby. So it's the job of the sperm to activate the egg. How does the sperm activate the egg? The sperm has a little cap on its head, which is called an acrosomosome, which contains special enzymes, which allow this to happen. And when the acrosomal enzymes release, there is an influx of calcium ions into the egg cytoplasm, which activates it. And this happens routinely most of the time in the bedroom, obviously, most of the time when you do IVF without a problem, but sometimes it doesn't. And the reason it does it is because some of these men have a sperm problem where they do not have an acrosome or a cap. These are called round-headed sperms. Now, you would expect that would be fairly easy on a semen analysis to find out whether these men have a round head, whether their acrosome is present or not. And the fancy word for this is globo, which means round globozoospermia. But unfortunately, lots of labs don't bother to do a sperm test well at all. They don't stain the sperms as a result of which they don't specifically look for the presence of the acrosome or not, which means often the report is these sperms are normal, but they're actually not. And then the poor patient only finds out when there is total failure of fertilization, both after IVF and after ICSI. Now, this obviously comes as a root shock. And that's why it's so important that the testing be done reliably, correctly and accurately. Now, if you failed fertilization after IVF, the next logical step is to do an ICSI because sometimes the sperms are not functionally competent to fertilize on their own. But when you fail fertilization after ICSI, which is really uncommon, then the only reason for that is either an incompetent laboratory or a bad embryologist who kills the eggs or this rare condition called globozoospermia. The good news is we now have a solution which means though the sperms lack the acrosome, by using assisted oocyte activation, we can allow these globozomic, globozoospermic sperm to fertilize the eggs by doing ICSI. And we do that by adding a special chemical called a calcium ion for in the culture medium in which the ICSI is being done so that this allows the eggs to get activated. Sounds like a mouthful. I apologize about this. This is not a common condition. Most IVF specialists are clueless about it. Lots of embryologists don't know about it. But that's no reason why you can afford to be ignorant if you happen to have this uncommon problem. So make sure you're well informed. Ask these intelligent questions. And then if that is in fact the problem, then please remember the good news is that the success rates with ICSI with assisted oocyte activation for men with global zoospermia is Excellent. So there's no reason to get this started. You just need to find a good IVF clinic. I hope this was helpful. And as an IVF doctor, I take pride in sharing my knowledge with IVF patients to help you get the best possible medical care. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us and we'll be happy to create a video to answer your questions.